guys and welcome back to another Emperor tutorial. Today what we're going to be looking at is Tint Index and how to basically create it with custom models or the built-in settings for Emperor. And uh, today we're just going to do that and first off let's just quickly take a look at what the Tint Index actually does and then we'll move on from there into Blockbench and then create our own model and stuff. So. This is basically what the Tint Index does, is it takes a texture or overlay texture and then it basically converts it into a specific color map for uh, particular things. There's different color maps in the, uh, the world, uh, for example one color map is the water, uh, another one is the fog of the water, and then there is the foliage color such as leaves. And then there is also the grass as well as sky and stuff like that as well. So this is basically the color for the um, forest biome that we're currently in. If we were to compare it to the other one, because the the scale, the gray scale of the actual block is more has more darker gray color in in the actual texture. It basically looks a little bit darker than the actual grass color of the block here. So if you want to kind of use the colors of certain things, then you you want to go into the Minecraft folder and see what kind of shades of gray they actually use for their tint index. So I've basically used a similar color to the um, as gravel for the top texture here and the side texture is very similar to um, how the uh, grass texture is in the extreme hill biome so it's going to be a lot darker naturally that way. If we go over to this biome which is naturally darker for grass color as you can see it kind of basically updates to be that particular shade and you can see the side is a lot darker now as well because of the uh, the shade that I used for that particular color. So let's go into M Crater now not always you're going to want the single texture like this on the top for grass and you might want to have it all just one texture. We'll actually go into block bench first and we'll, I'll show you how to basically create it. Uh, create a separate texture for your models that you can basically use that is all one solid texture. So let's go into um, block bench and then we'll carry on from there. All right, so we're in Blockbench, and I'm going to actually create a new model. So I'm going to select Java slash or block Java block slash item, and then what we're going to do is just give this a name. So this is the file name that we're basically going to be working with. I'm going to call it Mossy uh, Gravel, and then I'm going to basically set confirm. And then what I'm going to do is create a couple cubes, and then what we'll do is we'll import our textures. So I'm going to set this to just a 16 by 16 by 16 cube. And then we're going to import our textures that we want for a map. So these textures should be, um, you, you should have your solid texture, which would be a full texture. And then what you're going to do is you're going to cut out the section where your overlay will be. So in our case, our overlay will be like this, but we're going to have a different map for that. So we have our basic texture for our gravel, and then what we have is our overlay map here. So when you make sure to actually create these two textures separately, so we can basically define them a little bit differently. So after we've basically created the textures, we can import them. And then we want to set the properties for the variable so we can know what textures are which when we import it to mCreator. So in our case, this is our block texture and the other one is our overlay. So we're gonna just texture or name this one overlay and then hit confirm and then we should have our textures all set up. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to just set the texture. So we're going to go over to our block here. We're actually going to name this one block. And we're going to just set the texture to our block texture here. So this is what it's going to look like by default. And you can see where our 
basic or texture for our overlay map will come in for a tint. So I'm actually going to duplicate this and then it should be in the exact same spot in rotation as the other one. And then what we're going to do for this one is we're going to rename this one overlay. And then what we're going to do is set our texture to our mossy gravel overlay. And now you should have a solid block without any uh, textures missing from the block. There is one more thing that we need to do for this particular block. We're going to make sure that our overlay texture or overlay cube is selected. And then we're going to go to UV window right up here. And then what we want to do is go and find the checkbox that is located right here. And it says enable the tint option for the current face. And if you have all your faces like this, you can just click it and all these different sides will uh, say that it's basically on. Now you want to do this only for the overlays that you want to basically have for a specific tint. So once you've done that, you can just close out of this and then you can basically save your workspace. So make sure to do that because you might need to make changes later. And we're going to just save it to our desktop. And then what we're going to do is basically export and then export block slash item model. And then we're going to save that to our desktop as well. Now there is just one last thing that we need to basically do in order to make it very similar to a default cube. And we're going to go to our, uh, where I have my resources for the Minecraft jar. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to assets, Minecraft, models, and then block. And then what we're going to do is we're going to type in block and a block.json block JSON should come up and we're going to open that up with Notepad++. I already have one imported because I have it saved so it's basically the exact same settings. Then we're going to open up our model uh, for that we just basically exported and then we're going to copy the settings from this little bracket right here and then we're going to go all the way up to the display part where the comma is and then we're going to copy that and then what we're going to do is put a comma at the end of the square bracket and then we're going to paste the display settings in right after that. So what this will do is it will make it have the same display settings as the uh, general block uh, found in Minecraft. So things like bricks, uh, stone, things like that will all use these same settings for display. So after that, make sure to save your model. And then what we can do is we can go and import this into Amp Creator. So while in Amp Creator, what we need to do is we need to go and click Import JSON 3D Model. And then we're going to select our JSON model that we basically just edited. We're going to select our overlay. Now I've already imported the overlay for this new texture. So I'm gonna select that one and I'm going to select our block texture as well. And then we have our overlay and then our block texture here. And then what we need to do is basically go to our actual model or block that we have and I'll cover the settings next. So when you start up the program and create a new block what you're going to have is similar settings to this and I'll explain what the tint index basically works and how it is set up. So overlays have to be on a grayscale. You can actually use color but it won't, uh, it still uses the value of if it were gray. So if you were to use a darker gray then it's going to be a lot darker when it's actually using the tint index. So when you're creating grass and stuff like that for uh, colors and you use dark colors to actually, or dark shades of the colors to basically texture your grass, then it will basically come out a lot darker than the biome grass color. So in our case, this texture is a lot darker than the gravel texture. Gravel is actually closer to the grass color than this one. So this actually comes out a lot darker than the actual grass color. Now, if we want to enable tint index, what we need to do is we need to enable the tint type. So there are different types of tint in types. There is no tint, which basically disables it. Uh, grass, which is basically grass color. 
foliage, which is basically things like leaves and tall grass, things like that. And then we have water, which is pretty self-explanatory. It's just water texture, sky, fog is the fog for the sky, and then there is water fog as well. So in our case, I'm going to basically select grass and that will be good. Uh, the, the other option is, is block item tinted. So if you want your block item to be tinted, what you can basically do is check this box and it will tint the block item in your hand when you actually have the item in the inventory. Another thing that to note is this does not support crop models or crop block bases or the normal block base. So if you were to use a um, normal block base or the crop model block base, it won't support it, but it does support cross, single textures, and grass, as well as custom models for JSON files. So in our case, we can use our custom model for the, the mossy gravel that we just imported, and then all we need to do is set up our particle, texture, particle textures, and we're good to go. So after you've done that, you can basically just go through all the settings, make it, configure it how you want to, and then we can basically move on. So make sure to save after, and then we'll go into game and I'll show you how this basically works now. All right, so we're now in game and we have a texture for our mossy cobble gra or mossy gravel. So this is the block that we basically just created for the overlay. And as you can see, we have, well, I hope if the time's not turning to night, night. So we'll set the time set day, and we'll have a little bit easier time to see what the color is. So if we place it next to the grass, you can see that it's just a little bit darker than the grass color. This is because I use darker shades to basically use for the overlay. Uh, you can change that if you want to and try to get use the same colors as the overlay for the top of the grass or whatever to basically get the um, similar pixel shading and stuff like that to make it almost exactly the same. So that's one way that you can do it. And if we go over to this biome over here now, you can see the, the pixels on the side here have changed uh, quite a bit uh, to kind of match the a little bit darker than the uh, grass color in this particular biome. So that's basically how it works. And just to prove that the method does work, if we go far back, it does not flicker because how it basically works. I think it got a little bit darker because of the way that we have it set up. But the other method that I've used is basically using the, um, basically inflating the overlay now that would work as well but the only downside for that is it basically does flicker if you get to a certain distance so there's a kind of pro and con when it comes down to uh, what you're basically going to be doing for your model yeah it does look like it's getting a little bit darker so if you want to have your kind of like textures a little bit flickering I suggest uh, having the inflate 0.02 or higher. Uh, the, the further out the pixel is, or the further out the block is inflated, the uh, less uh, that it will flicker. So if it's really close, like 0.001, then it's gonna be flickering a lot, where if it's further out, then it will basically not flicker as much. So I'll show you this other method that you can basically use to try to use for the overlay. So let's hop back into Blockbench and I'll show you this other method. Okay, so we are in Blockbench again. And if we select our gravel texture, we wanna replace this with a different a solid texture for our actual color so we're going to change file and then we're going to select our solid gravel texture now this will actually flicker if we go to the display settings and zoom out a little bit it will flicker a little bit usually um, I think this is not happening because it's not using the same settings as vanilla Minecraft but it will flicker in game so what we want to do is we actually want to go to our edit tab and then we want to select our overlay. And then what we want to do is inflate this by 
and then we want to do 0 0.2 and this will increase the level of which it basically is overlaid over the texture now if it's still flickering at a certain distance and you're not happy with it you can increase this number a little bit so 0 0.5 and you can kind of see the edge of it basically coming off of the block just a little bit and what this will do is it will basically fix the flickering problem to extend. Now at further distance it will still flicker from time to time but this is a quick alternative of fixing it. Uh, the other alternative is you can decrease the cube size and then put this on the inside but it's probably best to have the overlay kind of go on the outside of the block so it doesn't uh, mess with other textures and stuff like that. So once you have that all you need to do is make sure that your your base texture is a solid texture and then underneath when if it's on a certain angle it won't um, show the uh, basically air blocks under and then you can basically just export it and fill the settings up for the block again for the uh, display settings and you should be good to go. Outside of that, that's all the time that I have for today. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.